Today we're going to talk about continental drift. Continental drift is the theory that all of the plates were once together in a supercontinent and have spread out over time, spread apart, and that they're still moving now. So the continents of the world have not always been in the same place. Here's where we are now. And a long time ago, millions of years ago, they were all together in one giant supercontinent. Alfred Wegener was a German scientist who proposed the idea of continental drift. He said, and I quote, the continents have drifted, drifted to their present locations over millions of years. They were once joined as a supercontinent, which he called Pangaea. Wagner died before he could find any proof. It wasn't until 100 years later that his theory was proved. The reason that he died crazy was because he could not prove the mechanism that made the plates move. So he thought that the plates plowed through, continental plates plowed through oceanic crust, much like a boat would plow through water. So the continents were plowing through the oceanic crust and the oceanic crust would crumble on the sides. However, now we know that that is not the case. Here's our Pangaea meaning all earth, and over time it is spread out until we're here. This image right here, they hypothesize, scientists hypothesize, it will continue to move until millions of years from now it rejoins into another giant supercontinent. Putting the pieces together, so Wegener had several different theories about how um, the continents were all fit together. He had several reasons or proofs why he believed that all of our continents would fit together. So if you look at the continents, they look kind of like they'd fit into a jigsaw puzzle here. These pieces, you can kind of see how they would make that, but they don't fit perfectly. Um, the better fit is found by matching the continental shelves or the original shorelines. They're now underwater. So if we look at our continents today, the original um, continental shelves have eroded away, water has risen, and covered these shelves up. But if we were to examine these shelves, we'd find that they fit very nicely like a jigsaw puzzle. He also found geological or rock evidence. So mountain ranges extend over the continents, and this could have only formed if Pangaea was actually the supercontinent. Um, in North America, we have the Appalachian Mountains that extend into Europe and the Alps. They hypothesized that that was once one giant mountain. These mountain ranges also have similar ages in their rocks, and they have similar folds or rock layers. Moving on to our geologic rock evidence, continuing from those mountain ranges, in places that were connected, they have similar rock features, meaning similar layers of rocks and similar types of rocks. Um, the main area that Wigner noticed this was in Newfoundland right here and in Greenland, Norway, Scotland, and Ireland. So if we look at this rock right here and these other rocks that he has found in Greenland, Ireland, Scotland, and Norway, they're made of the same composition. They date back to the same time of formation and they have similar rock layers. Wagner also found fossil evidence. This little guy right here is the Mesosaurus. The Mesosaurus has no fins, no great swimming capability, and he's a freshwater reptile. The Mesosaurus was found in South America and Southwest Africa, so the sides of those two continents that would meet up. Here's our South American Mesosaurus and our African Mesosaurus. The distance between these is about 6,000 kilometers of ocean, open ocean. Again, this little guy is not such a great swimmer. And even if he were a great swimmer, it's a freshwater reptile. So he's not going to be able to swim through or survive through the open saltwatery ocean. Wigner also found ferns in South America, Africa, Australia, India, and Antarctica. Now we would expect to find ferns, a tropical plant, 
in South America, Africa, Australia, and India because it's warm has the capability of growing plants. However, Antarctica is very, very cold and could not support plant life, which su suggests that at one point in time, Antarctica was a colder climate. So here's our Antarctica 200 million years ago. And 200 million years ago, there was no evidence that the Arctic regions or colder climates were any warmer than they were today. So that suggests that Antarctica had to have been shifted up into a warmer climate. Here's some of the similar matching fossils that Wigner also found in addition to this fern right here and our little Mesosaurus, which is right here. He also found um, the Sinogonathrus in South America and Africa and this Lystosaurus going through Africa, India, and Antarctica. Glacial evidence was another key that Wigner used to support his continental drift theory. Um, when glaciers melt, they leave behind like a scratching in the rock. If you've ever been up to Estes Park and been to Moraine Park, it was created by a glacier. So the glacier, as it fell through the mountains, scraped out kind of a basin. Um, evidence of glaciers formed in ice, age, ice ages supports his theory. Um, during ice ages, glacier, glaciers covered large areas of land. When they move, they leave behind this proof, these deep striations and valleys and patterns of rock formation. Um, millions of years ago, down here, these areas would have been centered around the South Pole. So we found glacial evidence in South America, which is now very warm, Africa, which is very warm, parts of India, and in Australia. Wigner also found coal in Antarctica. Coal forms from tropical plant material that's dead and has been pressurized for millions of years. Since the South Pole, Antarctica has never had a tropical climate. It had to have been located somewhere else for this coal to form. So that sums up Wigner's theory of continental drift, that everything was once joined in a supercontinent called Pangaea, but it was never proven in his lifetime. A hundred years later, a scientist named Hess discovered seafloor spreading, which ended up proving that Wegner's theory could actually take place. It gave the mechanism to plate tectonic movement. Analyzing core samples and sonar readings from around the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, Hess made an astonishing discovery a phenomenon almost beyond comprehension. The age of the Atlantic Ocean floor, he determined, was progressively older the further it moved away from the ridge. Harry Hess had discovered that the seafloor was spreading. He concluded that molten rock was being forced up from inside the earth at the ridge, where it then formed into new crust on the ocean floor. Gradually, it was pushed away on either side as more molten rock continued pushing up from behind it. Hess called his great discovery, seafloor spreading. Harry Hess was in a position that he could bring it all together. Things were spreading apart and new earth was being generated. But if you did this for long enough, the earth should grow. And it doesn't. The earth doesn't get any bigger. No. Harry appreciated the fact that if new earth was being generated in one area, they have to be consumed or recycled in another area. The process that recycles the crust of the spreading ocean floor back inside the earth is called subduction. More about seafloor spreading and subduction next time.